If not, maybe we'll just record something and we'll upload it later for you. We'll see. <laughs> um, is it working? No, yeah, we'll see. Maybe you hit refresh and it'll come up. It'll be a miracle. <laughs> I, I'm going to cross my fingers and miracle. Enjoy no, it. it's not working yet. Anyway, um, I'll just keep talking to myself and, and we'll see if it comes up. Oh, something's happening. <gasps> I see while. myself there on the screen now, so maybe it is working. <laughs> anyway, the first thing that we did, we started over on Facebook like we usually do, and we were having streaming issues, so we came over here to YouTube, and we we're still having streaming issues, but maybe we've got something working now. So we'll, we'll keep moving forward as if it's working right. Um, the first thing we did over on Facebook was we tried swatching some new pens, we're here with our friends Polly and Jan who do full-time RVing and we thought we would have our first RVing experience with some um, RV pros that could help us learn how to work our new RV. And um, Polly, she went shopping and found some new Pentel pens. And you guys know some of my very favorite Pentel um, gel pens are the Pentel Sparkle Pops. They are beautiful, and so she brought me these pens to try, and now I need to go buy them because they are beautiful. Let me show you what they did. I'll flip the camera down and show you how beautiful they are. These are the Pentel Crazy Pops. So here on my channel, you know we're very familiar with the Sparkle Pops. These are the Sparkle Pops. They are sort of a hybrid sparkle um, glitter, Heart metallic and they have a two-tone effect and then they also make a beautiful milky pop which are really opaque pastel beautiful pen I love these two lines of pens they also make a neon pen that I don't like I think they're called the neon the solar pop that's what they're called the Pentel solar pop not a fan of the solar pops they have a really fine tip and they're really hard to color with. When I'm looking for a really good gel pen, I'm looking for a broad tip pen. And that's what this one here is. You can see there's a B for bold. It's a 1.0 millimeter tip pen. Those are the type of pens I look for for a good coloring gel pen. Now, a, a gel pen for doing notes or for writing letters, maybe you don't want a bold tip because they tend to smear more. But when you're doing coloring, a good smear is usually your best friend because you can get good blends and do really neat effects. So these crazy pops come in a bold tip, which means we're going to be able to do some really good effects with them. Now here I've already swatched all the crazy pop pens and they say they're a two-in-one ink and I really think that they're just an extension of the sparkle pops, which I adore. So you get that really great two-tone effect with these crazy pop pens. And you get four new colors, cotton candy, electric watermelon, velvet stardust, and lemon lime slime. And here I did all the colors. This is a sparkle pop pen that I did to compare. And I even did a smear so you can see what they look like smeared. I'm gonna move them in the light so you hopefully will catch what they look like with a little sparkle here and I can see we've got a little lag going on and I apologize for that um, we'll just do the best we can today and hopefully next week we can get the stream to work just a little bit better we'll keep working on the quality of this streaming for you um, when we're on the road um, yeah well we'll just keep working on it and see what we can do to make this work better for all of us but yeah, I think I'll be buying these Crazy Pop pens because they are beautiful. The, the cotton candy is pink with a blue sparkle on top. The electric watermelon is green with a pink sparkle on top. The velvet stardust is like a blue with a green sparkle on top. And the lemon lime is a yellowy green color with a blue sparkle on top. So they're really pretty and I totally think they're worth the money. Although the price on here says it was $12.99 at Hobby Lobby. So definitely want to use your coupon for that one. That's a little bit pricey. 
So uh, what I was going to talk about next was if you're a brand new gel pen collector, this is one of the most common questions I get about gel pens is how do you start a gel pen collection? What would I recommend someone to purchase for gel pens? How do we do this? So I want to talk about that a little bit and Steve's back now, although Rose is trying to take over his spot here. <laughs> here, come say hi Rose. Hi everybody. I'm in the RV too and it's hot in here. Hi everybody. Hi. <laughs> so Steve will catch up with the chat. You want to go see Polly? She's like, no, I'm going to stay right here. Oh, she totally backed up. Anyway, so um, Steve's going to look over the chat here and see if there's any questions. But I'm going to talk a little bit about how I would recommend someone start their collection and what kind of pens to look for. So is there any questions I need to answer? Uh. <laughs> He's reading right now. But I'll take a quick drink of water while you read here. I don't think so. Okay, good. All right. So my general recommendation is to go on to Amazon or to a store, you know, even like Costco will sell the really big kits of gel pens where you can get a really large variety of gel pens, a little bit of everything. Um, you know, you can find tons of them for a really good price. Um, Jill Ryder makes one. I think there's Castle Art Supplies makes one. Uh, there's all different brands that make these big sets, you know, like 100, 150 different colors. You'll get um, pastels, you're going to get glitters, you're going to get metallics. You're going to get a little bit of everything in one of these big sets. And that will get you started and let you play around with a little bit of everything. And that's where I recommend you get started. And then you can start purchasing these specialty pens. If you want to try out the Pentel Sparkle Pops and maybe these Crazy Pops, you can start investing in these specialty pens and start growing your collection. Um, that's a really good way to go. Um, I really recommend the Pentel Sparkle Pops because they color really well. They have a really good payoff and they're fun because of the two-tone. They're a really good place to start with a specialty pen. And then, of course, um, the next kind that I really recommend are the Jelly Rolls. They're a really dependable, really good pen. You can buy them open stock, which means one at a time. I recently got this. I think this was for my birthday, right? Mother's Day, something Mother's like that. Mother's Day. Yeah, birthday, birthday, somewhere. Birthday. Yeah. I got this big kit of the Jelly Roll, which is like 74 different pens all in one kit love this kit it's really fun but very expensive so it's really not the way i recommend people to start out with gel pens i recommend people start with one of those less expensive ones and then add on because this is a really pricey way to start and if you're not sure you like coloring with gel pens then don't start here start with one of the cheaper sets and then maybe add on the kit that i like most the set in here if i was to recommend are the moonlights now the moonlights are really fun and you want to get the bigger point tips the 10 ones not the six ones get the 10 point tips because that's the bolder tip like i said the bolder the better for coloring the moonlight ones are so versatile they're very opaque which means you can color on black and let me show you what i did with my moonlights this is some really fun black paper you can pick up it's by canson it's a black drawing pad and let me show you i swatched all of these gel pens right here the jelly rolls onto the black paper and you're gonna see but not all gel pens perform the same on black paper these are um all of them here swatched out and this row right here are the moonlights and look how they perform they're just gorgeous on black paper so much fun and you can do really fun doodling type artwork with your um, moonlight pens so if you're going to start moving into the jelly rolls I would highly recommend the moonlight as one of your very first set to purchase to expand your collection because look at that and it looks equally as beautiful on white paper as it does on black which is kind of a trick not all tools do equally good on black as they do on white 
Oh, here's one of the moonlights right here. See, this is a moonlight and it says six on it. So that means it's more of the fine point. So you'll want to look for the Moonlight 10s. That's the more bold point, but both are great. Doesn't really matter which one you have. I just prefer a nice bold point pen because it, you get that really good flow and you can do really good smears and blends. So the Moonlight pens are a great place to start with your Jelly Roll collection. Okay, so that's how I would recommend if you've never done gel pens before, to do your collection and then they have other kinds of collections you can pick up let's say maybe you want to celebrate sparkle september you can actually go get an entire big set of sparkle pens this one's by super doodle they make um, different sets of pens and this one's all sparkle pens look at all those colors you get all in sparkle pens i'll show you what polly got recently too she got a big set of sparkle pens too so you can actually get one whole set of nothing but sparkle pens. If that's your thing, is all sparkle and glitter, that's what you want to get then is a big set of sparkle. So what's the difference between a sparkle pen and a glitter pen or like a metallic pen? Typically a sparkle pen is more transparent. You'll be able to have, um, you could do an underlaying of like a marker and then color on top of it so you can get different effects that way. Where a metallic pen typically has more of a, a opaque type nature. So you'll see the difference. That's why I recommend you get a big set that has a little bit of everything and then you'll learn for yourself how each pen acts different. I'll show you the set that Polly recently got. She brought it over so I could show all of you. She got this one here, 200. It says 100 glitter gel plans plus 100 refills. So if you didn't know, you can get refills for your gel pens as well, which is really handy because if you're in the middle of coloring something and you run out of a color, that's really frustrating. So if you go watch my playlist of videos um, on how to color with gel pens, I show you a lot of tricks and hints and it can make your gel pens last a lot longer by using some of those tricks and hints. So look at that beautiful big set of gel pens. Okay, so the next thing that people always ask me is what kind of paper should I be using for your gel pens? We talk a lot about pairing the right art tool with the right paper and Putting the two together will always create a better end result for you. So what kind of paper do you need for gel pens? There was a question also, the okay, difference good. between the Sparkle Pop and the Crazy Pop. Okay. Crazy Pop is a new line. Brand new. I don't own it yet. These I couldn't even are, find it online. It's not even on their website. I know. I have a really... I couldn't find it on Pentel's website either. So this is brand new, hard to find. Um, Let's see, uh, Polly found it at Hobby Lobby. So that's, that's where she got it. Um, and I am guessing that they are, they're acting very similar, uh, the same as Sparkle Pop. So I'm thinking it's just an extension to the line of Sparkle Pop pens. Cause it's kind of the same thing. You get that two tone effect. And when you move it in the light, you get that other color starts to show through. Um, they do look different. Let me show you the two side by side. So here's a sparkle pop pen it's versus the kind of like the they redesigned pop. it to show the two different colors you're going to get. Yeah, you get different end caps. This one has stars on it. This one has like waves. No, more like drips. Looks like drips on the end. So that's what you're looking for if you're looking for a crazy pop pen. It looks like this and it says crazy on it <laughs> so you're looking for whoops <laughs> so um yeah that's what you're looking for brand new line hopefully they'll come out with even more colors and they'll become more available as time goes on that's what we're hoping for okay so what kind of paper um my favorite paper for gel pens is something that has just a little bit of texture or tooth. You don't want something that is too smooth, and let me explain why. If you look at a typical gel pen, 
the way a gel pen works is that it has a little ball on the tip of the pen. So here is your gel pen and on the very tip there is a ball and that ball has to be engaged in order for the, the ink to flow correctly. So to have that ink flowing, you gotta get that ball going. So if your paper is too smooth, that ball is not going to roll and not going to allow the ink to flow. So you have to get the ball going and that means you need a little bit of texture. So if you're working on something super smooth like plastic or a really, really nice marker paper, that ball, it may engage and roll from time to time, but it's not gonna roll the best. So you need a paper that has just a bit of texture. If it's got too much texture, then sometimes it will roll funny and do weird things. So we have a paper that I call the mixed media paper. It's a nice card stock, but it has just a little bit of texture not a strange bumpy texture just a nice even texture and it makes it really easy for the gel pen to flow across the top of the paper so that's what you need to look for so uh, my favorite paper is this cardstock here it works really great it's nice and thick so if i do some serious um, blending or if i want to hit it with a little bit of alcohol marker first and then go over it with gel pen I can do that and I'll get the right result that I want out of my coloring. So that's the best paper I would recommend is a nice cardstock that has just a little bit of texture but not too much. So yep. All right. So paper is a good thing here. Okay. So I think we should go ahead and start doing a little bit of coloring here on this mandala that I have chosen here we have a lot of excitement going on around me and i'm doing everything i can to stay focused on what i'm doing here <laughs> if you could only see what's going on around me okay i'm staying focused on coloring some sparkly stuff here for all of you i've got my um, pivoting table here um, if you're curious about this table, I've actually linked it in our Amazon storefront. So you can follow the link in our video description and go check out the Amazon storefront to learn about this. It's by Totally Tiffany and it works really great when you're working on mandalas. Now Rose is getting involved in the excitement. <laughs> This has been quite a, a stream we're doing here, <laughs> but I want to get some colors down. So let's let's use some sparkle pops here and get some colors. We need to get some sparkle going for Sparkle September. So I'm going to do some pink and I'm feeling green and maybe we'll even... Uh, okay. I'm not going to use her expensive crazy go for it. Go for it. I know she's saying go for it, but I'm not going to use it. Go for it. No, <laughs> use it. Okay, here we go. We're going to do start with pink and green. I'm filling <laughs> pink and green. And then I've got here some tape and I've got some glycerin. <laughs> you guys should see what's going on around me. It's quite a party here. Okay, so what we're going to do, let me show you what we're doing. I'm going to take a piece of tape. Now this is scotch, this is scotch tape, and I'm going to put this right here, and I'm going to put this square around this like this so you can see where my tape is, because it's hard to see on camera, and I'm going to put tape. Now, this scotch tape is going to give me a non-porous surface, just like this. And what we're going to do is create like a palette, okay? I'm going to move these over here, green and pink. How are we doing? green and pink. I'm really feeling green and pink here. So I'm going to scribble some of the pink onto my tape. We're going to do some painting with the gel pens. 
Now this is a great way to make your ink last longer. Look at that sparkle. Okay, and I'm going to put some green down too. Uh, the magic of TV, all you get to see is the focused <laughs> coloring right here. And I need a brush, which I've got right here. My little box of treasures. We're going to use this little one right here. Okay. Now, right here I've got glycerin. Now, this is vegetable glycerin. And um, I still have not found out for sure. But it's my sneaking suspicion that glycerin is one of the ingredients inside of a gel pen, the ink. And I think that's why this trick works so well. So what we're going to do is on this paper plate, put a little dollop of glycerin. You can pick up glycerin at a pharmacy, at your art store. I got mine at um, an art store uh, in the soap making aisle is where I found my glycerin. Okay, and I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of the glycerin with my brush. And then I'm going to pick up some of this ink over here that's on the tape. And we're going to color with this sparkly, beautiful ink on our mandala. And you can see how much farther we can get that ink to spread doing it like this versus mm. coloring. If I had tried coloring like just straight from the pen, we would be here a long time okay. and we would use a lot of ink. But doing it this way, we get a different look and we save a lot of ink. And then we can come back with that same pen and add some contrasting details, some deeper, pretty extra details. So this is one of the tricks I teach you in that playlist that I have linked in the video description. Is painting with your gel pens. Oh, like Carolyn just donated. Oh, <laughs> that's nice of you, Carolyn. Thank you, Carolyn. She's donating because she sees us struggling, and and we needed a little donation <laughs> to make it through our our learning curve here. So we'll get a little bit more glycerin, pick up a little bit more of the ink. And look how pretty. The great thing about painting with it this way, too, is that you still preserve all of the glitter. And you get this beautiful brush of color. Yeah, there's different ways of doing this. You can actually... Um, prep the area with the glycerin first and then dip the pen right into the area and then pull the color. That's another way of doing it. You can lay some of the ink down and then with a brush that has glycerin on it, you can try pulling it. This is one of my favorite ways because you don't have to rush quite so fast. The, the ink will actually stay on your non-porous surface your paint for quite your your tape for quite a while you can reactivate it and come back to it so you can kind of slow down and relax and enjoy this process which i really like it dries a little slower with glycerin right yes okay jan do you need a drink after that I have water. I don't have any stiff drinks, but I have water. <laughs> you want to get him some water? There's right there. <laughs> the Cope says I have a fine line jelly tool white pen that won't write. Any suggestions on getting it to flow? A white one? Yeah. White gel pens are my nemesis. If you've been around at all, you know how much I hate white gel pens. <laughs> Uh, there's something about the white gel pens 
that makes them dry up unusually quick. I, the only thing I can recommend is, have you tried the tapping up and down? You can try a warm cloth on the tip to try to clear up that ball. Is the ink inside totally dry? That It could be totally dried up and it's done and it's gone and there's nothing to hope. Sometimes the ball gets dried up and if you can get it reactivated, you can get a little bit more life out of it. I'll zoom in a bit for you. Oh, thank you. But my experience has been about halfway through a brand new pen, they just stop working. And you just have to cry a little bit and get a new white gel pen. Or you do what I have done and give up on white gel pens altogether. And I've moved to white Posca paint pens. That's my new white pen. So, well, your white Posca paint pen's not working? I don't know what the answer is. I have other white paint products like P.H. Martin's. Dr. P.H. Martin makes a really nice white paint product. <coughs> Copic makes a nice white paint product. So it sounds like Tika has been enjoy enjoying a new, some other gel pen she got called Boxen, B-O-X-U-N. Oh. And she says the Boxen White has been working well for her. So. Well, will you write that name down for me? I'm always on the hunt for a new white gel pen. <laughs> I hope it works all the way to the end. If it does, maybe we'll all go buy that one. Donna asked if the uh, if it stains the the glycerin stains the paper. The glycerin it takes a little time to dry, but it will eventually soak in. Like I said, I think it's an ingredient in the gel pen. So just like gel pen takes a little time to dry, we're adding a little extra glycerin into it, so it will take a little bit longer to dry down. I may, just a minute. We've, I've got to vision here. I got to do the vision. Okay, so now we've got this area done. So I'm going to come in and we want to add a little contrast, a little depth, because it's looking really pretty, but kind of flat, right? Just one color. So we're going to come in with the actual pen now and add some depth. So this is the same pen. So we're going to get a nice two-tone effect here. And it's slightly still wet with glycerin here. And we can pull it up now and hopefully get a bit of a gradient. Donna asked, how do you care for the brush to get the gel pigment out of the bristles? If it stains it, it's no big deal. Um, I don't care if my brushes get stained. This is not one of my precious watercolor brush. I wouldn't use anything that you've spent a lot of money on. This is um, a, this is actually a set of brushes that were gifted to me. It's more of a all-purpose brush that um, you can pick up. So pick up a set of brushes that are are not precious. You know, like you can go to Walmart or Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever and buy a set of brushes that are good for acrylics or watercolor or oil. You know, it says that on all. It'll say it's good for all of them. Those types of brushes are really good for this kind of purpose. Um, if you're doing watercolor, you're gonna want a brush specific for watercolor. But for this kind of thing, an all-purpose brush is perfect. Okay, there we're getting a really pretty gradient. Look at that. And it works perfect because we're using the same color so we know it's going to blend out and match perfectly. Danny asked if you've tried using a Caran d'Ache Aquarelle palette with gel pens. Have she I said, or any textured palette? No, I haven't. Sounds like fun. So I'd love to know what your favorite brands of gel pens are. And Donna was wondering if the brush is still pliable after using it for the gel pen. Yeah, I just go rinse it out in water and it usually cleans up really good without any problem. Okay, this needs just a touch more glycerin to help it move and blend out. Look at that. Rotate. 
with my rotating board. Love adding just a little extra depth. So that's really cool using the glycerin because you can make your colors go farther and you can do these two-tone effects all with one pen. We've done all of this with just one pen. So you get, um, your pens can go farther. So if you do invest in a little bit more of an expensive pen like this, you can get more effects out of one pen. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Look at the mm -hmm. glitter, the sparkle for September. Do you guys have any plans for Sparkle September? Are you going to do anything fun? I want to do this whole mandala in nothing but sparkles. Oh, fun. Oh, that would be really fun. And I'll probably post the finished mandala on Instagram. I'll probably post it on Facebook too. So make sure you're following me on either Facebook or on Instagram so you can see the finished version and I'll probably film it and move it in the light because you know you take a picture of the glittery ones and it always doesn't do it justice right you did all this work to put glitter on it and then you take a flat picture and you're like ah can't see all my pretty work I've never figured out a good way to take pictures of sparkly things Okay, there we go. It's looking good. All right. Now I think I have, maybe not. Would you hand me a paper towel, Polly? It's right there. Yep. We're going to wipe this off just a little bit here. Thank you. Tika would like you to teach him how to doodle on black sometime. Oh, <laughs> it's so satisfying and fun. So satisfying. Um, a really good way to doodle on anything is to look at, like, you could look at any of, like, my mandalas and get ideas of how I did things here and just transfer that same sort of designs onto something else. So look at some of your favorite coloring pages and get doodle ideas from them and try it out on something, on whatever you're working on. Okay, we still have a little bit of green right here on my tape. I'll pick up some of the glycerin and see how it reactivates, wakes it right up. Might have to use a little extra glycerin to get it going, but it wakes it right back up, even though it's been sitting here for a few minutes. Like I said, I really like this method because you don't feel like you're in a rush. Wake it right up and we're going to come in here and paint these green. Now just like when you're doing watercolor, when you add water to your watercolor, it dilutes the color and you get a lighter tone. That's the same idea here. We've added glycerin instead of water, so it's diluting the color down. So we'll be able to do that same gradient effect again right here. With the green. Uh -huh. There we go. This brush is working pretty good for this. Wow, see how far that ink went? There's even more left over here. I could have done even more. Like I said, you can get one pen to go a really long way. The problem with making your pens go a long way though is then it becomes difficult to justify buying new pens. Because <laughs> you're like, I'm not going through my pens as fast anymore and I want to buy new gel pens. How do I justify buying new pens when I haven't bought, when I haven't used up what I have? Okay, then we bring back the green one again, just like we did before and lay down the ink straight on and then just pull it out. Oh my god, pretty. 
Yeah, that is pretty. Beverly loves those colors together. Uh -huh. So, those are the dishes in my RV sink. <laughs> so, how is the stream working now? I think it's okay. Did we, after all the excitement, did it calm down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not great, but certainly not as good as, you know, home internet. But what can you expect from cellular? It's probably the best you can get out of cellular. Nowadays. Yeah. So, I'm hoping we can improve on the lighting. And how's the sound for them with the AC going? I'm curious, you guys, how does the sound working for you? Leah says, I tend to keep my color by just putting some glycerin on my brush just to get some ink. Oh, that's a great idea. There. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, really pretty. So pretty. Well, I wish we could turn the AC off, but I really think we would literally melt. Maybe the next time we try streaming from the RV, it won't be so hot. <laughs> I mean, it's September. You would think it would be cooling down by now. I don't know. That's really weird. Okay, there. We got the first thing I wanted to try. So pretty. Okay, then we'll just sort of wipe this off. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jack. Jack just donated 20 bucks. Jack, <laughs> thank you so much. There, Steve, you're on camera. Say hi. Hi, Jen. <laughs> okay, so we've got um, these two. I'm going to hold it up in the light and see if it'll catch the sparkles. No. Nope. Well, there. Caught it for a second. This lighting oh. does not catch yeah. sparkles we very well. Our, we got to get better lights. lighting. We're going to bring one of our lighting from the studio. Next time we're, we're trying to do this in the RV, we're going to bring one of our good lights and put it above. So we'll <laughs> see. Okay, so. Um, Robin said, I found a textured fixative that does not smell. It's brush mm -hmm. and pencil, advanced colored pencil texture fixative. Whoa, they also have a final fixative. I found it on Dick Blick's website. What, well, maybe you should write that one down for <laughs> yeah. me, too. <laughs> Today's the day of good um, suggestions. Okay, so Polly really wants me to try one of her crazy pop pens, so we're going to do it. This one is the um, Cotton Candy Bliss. We're going to use the Bliss one since we are here with um, Coloring Bliss. And it's got the blue and the pink. It's pink on the undertone and blue on the top. And I want to see what it's going to do with the glycerin. And we're going to try it um, maybe here with this part um, and see what it does. I'm curious to see if it's going to act just like the Sparkle Pop pen or we're going to see a little different here. Yeah, we'll do the tape. Oh, I lost my brush. Ta -da! Okay, so you can see with your palette, your fancy tape palette what you can do if you have like a if you have a pencil case that you carry around in your emergency art case you carry a brush like this with some of this tape wrapped around the handle of the brush and then you can just pull off what you need for your little palette and stick some of your tape down and then you'll always have some tape with your brush and then keep a little bit of your glycerin in a little bottle like this and then you always have what you need to do this technique no matter where you are in class at work at church wherever you are <laughs> you can always blend with glycerin glycerin is technically non-toxic it's technically edible although you probably shouldn't drink it it's in our toothpaste, it's in our lotions, it's in our makeup. 
glycerin is like in everything. When you start looking, you'll find it in everything. Okay, so we're going to put some of the Cotton Candy Bliss right here. Whoa, pretty. Looks very different than its swatch on the tape. Yeah. That's fun. Okay, I'll load it up so we have plenty to work with. Okay. I'm worried I'm gonna get I've got pens going everywhere. <laughs> okay. Now I'm gonna use a bit of extra glycerin in the tip of the brush to clean the brush. So if you are at school or work and you need to clean your brush without sneaking away, just use a little bit of glycerin in your brush and just do some squiggles on your on your paper or whatever to get it cleaned out. Deb asked where you got those grips. These brushes came this way and they were gifted to me. They are by Fabric Castell and they came in a four pack and they came with the grips on it. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, here we go. That's cleaner. Don't want to taint this pretty color. All right, we got probably too much glycerin. All right, here we go. Ooh. The pink is really coming out. All right, let's do, yeah, let's do the center. It's going very purple, so the blue is mixing in. I want to do the same effect though where we do the um, gradient. It's interesting. So it seems to be mixing the two? Yeah. Which yeah. makes sense because we're mixing right. the glitters and the metallics all together here. So I'm not surprised by that. Getting a purpley look. More fuchsia? Mm. Would you call that fuchsia? Mm -hmm. Magenta? I don't know what you'd call this color. Pinky color. Yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> it's a different color than that one, for sure. This one had more red undertones. We're going to need more ink. Melinda says brush and pencil also has a powdered blender for colored pencils. Oh, it's that brand. I know <laughs> that brand. Ah. That's in that video. So she's making a... Ah, fixative. A fixative now. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. This one's, this ink's not going as far, or I'm not using as much glycerin, something. Interesting. Okay, I wonder if it'll shine more. That'll be interesting too. All right, now let's bring in the two-tone. The gradient and see what this crazy pot pen does. Come on. Okay, and I don't want to disturb all of it. Pretty. How's the stream? Are we still streaming? <laughs> I'm worried we're gonna like lose the yeah, stream. It's been going good. What a relief. Jan to the rescue. Yeah. <laughs> These men, they keep us, keep our tech rolling. I just felt a dog on my leg. Hey, Rosie. Come here. Come up and say hi, Rose. I bet everybody wants to see you. Mm -hmm. Come here. Come here. 
Hi. Okay. That turned out really pretty. It acts pretty much like the other. I love that blue. I'm going to dot in here with some stippling dots because that will make that blue really pop in those. Oh, yeah. Bring up that two-tone effect even more. There. I'll bring up that two-tone. I might do the same thing with that green, yeah, I like too. That. One nice thing about the Sparkle Pop pens is that when you do the stippling with them, it actually works. Almost every tap, you get a, a little pop of color. Some gel pens won't stipple. Look at that. That's pretty. Now I want to do like blue up here. Where's my blue sparkle pop? Aha! Let's do some blue. And then I think after we're done with the blue, I think we'll probably call it a night before something goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're pushing our luck here. <laughs> so if there's any more questions about gel pens or what we're going to be doing for Sparkle September, um, I'm trying to, I should have this there. I'm loading up some sparkle. This is the blue sparkle pot pen. And I'm not even going to worry about cleaning it off because the colors are close enough. Oh. This blue is for you, Steve. <laughs> Holly. Yes. She just donated. Oh, she <laughs> did? <laughs> thank you both for a great visit and laugh. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you, you, Polly. <laughs> she feeds us and she donates. <laughs> so and sweet. helps us learn how to RV. How to RV. How to plug in our RV. <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about how difficult changes and a lot of you are are like me you have a lot of anxiety and chronic health problems and and that's why you color and you you've come to coloring as a way to deal with chronic problems and art really has helped me so much but my world has gotten so small over the last five years and we're trying so hard to stretch our wings a little bit here so that I can get out of the house more often and that's the dream here with the RV and part of the vision is being able to come out and meet some of you that's my hope is that we can do meet and greets and come and see some of you and not just virtually. I would love to come out into the world and meet some of you and do some coloring in person with you. And I really hope this works, but this is so hard. Like, you know, in my nice little art studio, I have everything there. I can, if I'm tired after we're done streaming, I just go to bed and <laughs> so, but you know, life is about pushing ourselves and learning and growing and change. And so I'm trying to be brave and do something hard. And the worst thing that can happen is we go back to the house and try something else. So that's not so bad right. to try. We got to try, right? It's just like learning a new art skill. You got to try and see if you like it. And so that's what we're doing. I'm dragging my men and we're going out for an adventure and see what happens out here so pretty big adventure <laughs>
Well, we're starting small though, in a nice little RV park with Polly and Jan to help mm -hmm. us to figure out how to plug everything in. Makes me envy healthy people who have the energy to just do stuff. All right, now we're gonna do the same technique. Add a little bit of the original color just to get that gradient. And then I'm gonna move it in the light for you so you can see the sparkle for Sparkle September. So remember we've got a really fun Facebook group um, and it's a really great place to go and post all of your Sparkle September pictures. I hope you can fill it full of sparkle and metallic and glitter projects that we're all doing this month together. And also, I want to encourage you to go over there and use it as a resource. We have so many talented and really connected artists over there, uh, people who um, know a lot about products, know a lot about coloring. So if you have any questions about, you know, what gel pens should I buy, or what paper is best, or um, what's a new colorist I could um, you know follow or you know there's lots of different kinds of questions we all have in this community and that Facebook group is a really amazing resource so I highly recommend you check out that Facebook group and join in and share some of your art even if it makes you a little nervous you'll find everyone there is really supportive and kind and eager to support you in anything that you post there all right, I got it. The green is coming out a little bit from this pen. Ooh, I need to do that same trick with the stippling here. So I'm gonna keep working on this. It'll probably be a couple days before you see my finished sparkle mandala. If you like this mandala and you'd like to color it, it's available in Mandala Bliss Volume 2. Is it a download too or is it just think so. in I the think book? I think it's just in there right now. Okay. So you can go check out our shop. The link is in the video description and you can download this one. Mandala Bliss Volume 2 is a book full of more detailed mandalas and it's perfect for gel pens. Gel pens have the tiny little pen tip so it's really fun to color little details with these little pens. So when I designed Mandala Bliss Volume 2, that was kind of the vision, was lots of details for getting in and coloring with little pens like gel pens. So if you like coloring with gel pens, I think you're going to really like Mandala Bliss Volume 2. If you like mandalas with bigger spaces, then I recommend Mandala Bliss Volume 3. It has bigger spaces, areas for coloring and gradients and even adding more of your own unique details to it. So go check out those two books if you like coloring mandalas. All right, let's move it in the light and see if I can catch it in our poor lighting here. Come on, come on, uh oh. Go more at an angle maybe? More angle, more angle, this oh, way, that way, this doesn't way. Doesn't want to catch it, does it? Doesn't want to <laughs> catch it. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll finish this and I'll get in really good lighting and I'll do a little filming of it in all of its Sparkle September glory. And I'll post it on Instagram and uh, Facebook so you can see the finished version of this pretty fun mandala. And you can see my first Sparkle September video. I'm gonna put this up here now. <laughs> so that's the plan. Thank you for bearing with us as we work through our first growing pains of streaming here in our RV. Um, we will be at times here in the RV and at times back in our art studio and you can look forward to some different locations hopefully from our RV. We'll see. We don't know what our plans are yet so we just have to learn the RV first before we can 
<laughs> go out into the world. We got to figure out things. So that's yeah. the plan. We got to learn and get confident first. So yeah. it's a new adventure. So thank you for bearing with us. And I hope to see all of your sparkle September coloring pages come up in our group. Let's see if I can find. Is this our group here? Yeah. That's the group there. So come and join us over there and post your pictures. I'll be looking forward to seeing it there. And we'll be back again next Wednesday. And hopefully the stream will go a little bit more smooth. Either we'll be in our studio or hopefully we'll have some more ideas figured out for making the stream go a little more smooth. So we'll see. Anyway, so here Rose, come say goodbye to them. Come up here and say goodbye. Yeah, okay. Bye everybody. Sorry the stream was a little bumpy, but it was still fun. Yes, it was. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks everyone who donated to the channel for all of your monetary support. We so appreciate it. You make Coloring Bliss possible and we're so grateful. So thank you everybody and I hope you all have a sparkly, colorful and wonderful, blissful night. Bye-bye everybody. <laughs>